Welcome back. Let's continue looking at the select statement and some more features we have with it. So we can also do aggregations with our columns. So in the previous video, we just looked at returning the entire column back. But we can do things like running sum out in front of the column name. So if we run sum on size and price, we're able to get the sums. We could also run, say, count i here. Remember we've seen the virtual column and we get the count of the table returned as well. So have a go with this exercise, returning the max price and average trade size from the trade table. And then let's move on and look at our where clause. So, so far we've learned how to filter our columns. Now we're going to look at how we can filter our rows. So this all happens in the where statement, which always comes after our from. And simply we have a list of constraints or criteria that comes after the where statement and they will be separated by a comma when we have more than one. So in this example here, we're doing where sim is e equal to apple. So we only get apple returned from our query. And then when we further filter on say, we're only looking for size greater than 20 and also for the date equal to the second, you'll see my sizes now are all greater than 70 and my date is all for the second here as well as just for Apple, okay? Now we're gonna just talk a little bit about the importance of the ordering of these where constraints. So it's super important that you know um, how your table is partitioned on disk if you are running a query on a partition table and also um, what is the parted column. So we're gonna run two different queries here and we're gonna mix up our where constraint. And what we're doing at the front here is timing it. And we're gonna run this 10 times. So this is simply just saying, do this 10 times, time it. And then I'm gonna say where my SIM is equal to Apple, size is greater than 70 and then the date. And then I'm gonna flip these around, do date, sim and then size. So let's run both of those. And you'll see the first one is significantly slower. Um, now, the reason for this is due to how the table is partitioned on disk. So if you're ever in, wanted to know how your table is partitioned, you can run .q.pt and that will list any partition tables that you have. And we'll see trade is one of them. You can also run .q.pv and that will give you the partition. So we see here it's date partitioned and if we weren't sure we could do dot P F just to see that is, is in fact date. So when you run these dot Q queries, you're basically um, getting a summary of the partition tables that you have in this database. So once we see it's date here, we know that date is always gonna be the most important one to put after the where clause. Um, now you might have a month partitioned um, database or a year partition database you know the most common one is date but it's always worth checking with our nice handy util functions here um, so you can be sure you're being the most efficient when you're querying um, and because of the way of the partition database being structured on disk in this example here this is saying i'm only going into the date partition so only that folder for the second then I'm further filtering on the columns in that date for the SIM and the size. Whereas in the one above here, um, I'm looking for the SIM and the size across all my date partitions. And then I'm only gonna afterwards for filter by date. We do do this in a bit more detail and show this in our one day workshop as well. Um, so check out that as well for um, a nice graphical explanation of that too. We're also showing here performance um, and the improvement you can have using a comma instead of an and. So we get this question a lot. Um, I'm used to using and, why can't I just use it? So we do have the and in um, KDB and in QSQL, um, but you'll see again with performance, if I use a comma, um, it's much more performant. So while you can use and, and you may be more comfortable using it, definitely, um, don't, <laughs> unless you really have to, um, you should use the comma um, and we're calling it the wrong way here. Basically, when you're using and like this, you're not um, achieving any of the performance benefits of what we just described with the partitioning of the table um, and able to be filtered on just the date partition first and then the, those columns within that date partition. When we use and, it's just applying this across the whole database um, rather than like basically doing it um, on a date partition specifically. Okay, um, so have a go at this exercise. So find all trades um, associated with Dell. And then we've got another exercise here. Um, write a select query using the trade table to find the VWAP 
for the Google stock. And then hint on VWAP, we've got this weighted average function that you might find useful to do that. Okay, so now we know how to use our WHERE clause and we know we've got some rules and best practices around that. Um, we can also look at using our BY clause. So when we want to do um, any grouping in Q with QSQL, this is where BY comes in and BY comes in after the SELECT and the FROM. So I could just do a simple SELECT SIZE for, uh, BY SIM from daily and what I get is a list of all the sizes um, that are um, each of the stocks. So this is the same thing as kind of doing a pivot table in Excel. Um, I can also run an aggregation on that column. So instead of just doing listing them all individually, like all the sizes in a list, I'm actually going to run select max size by SIM from daily. So that's obviously um, very useful to us there. We can get a quick summary of the max size for every single stock in that table. And we're, we can see actually that the table returned is keyed. So if we remember from our keyed and unkeyed tables in the previous module, we know that's a key table and that's often helpful for a quick retrieval. So once we have a key table, we know we can access um, specific rows using a key lookup here. So I'm just passing in my key that I want to look up and I'm returning the value. So IBM down here was 584613 and I'm getting that returned as a dictionary. Okay. If this is looking new to you, you can head back to the tables module and see tables versus key tables in more detail there. Okay. Now we can also run our user defined functions that we've created on these lists or columns. So I remember these here columns are just lists. So I can um, create a function like a Lambda here where I'm just returning the last five closing prices here. So I'm going to group that also by SIM. So this is returning the last five prices by for every single SIM in the table. We also have a neat overload of the by. So if we don't pass in any columns here at all, um, we actually get the last record in the table broken down by your grouping. So I'm running this one here and you'll see I just end up getting all the columns returned and it'll be the last one in that table. So that can be very handy when you just want a quick overview of, say, you know, a sample of the data that you have um, across the board for every um, grouping that you want. OK, so let's put that into practice. You've got a few exercises here. Um, write a select statement that returns from our trade table, the max and min prices and also the total number of trades broken down by SIM. Um, and then we want you to use um, the daily table in this one and recreating the daily table from the trade table above. So you're going to end up having something that looks like that daily table. So you'll have a high, open high, low, closed prices. Um, and then this is how you need to calculate those columns. And then you can verify it matched at the end using our tilde um, match operator. Okay, so have a go with those and I'll see you in our next video.